Let's show it already. The, the fun stuff. All the old ones, we still support them. We, Because we are supplying a Python, things like Python Connect no longer accept arguments. Python init um, doesn't take any arguments anymore. Those the, the arguments to them are deprecated. And because Python Connect does everything that init did, we've actually deprecated the Python init as well. Um, the, the benefit, the Python Connect, one thing it does is gives you the, the object so that you can send messages. Um, one, I, one I will point out, the Python Get Graphics has been completely removed, um, but in the scripting index gives the, basically the workaround on how you can do exactly what Jump was doing internally. This means we no longer carry a dependency on matplotlib. You can use matplotlib and pull it in, but Jump is no longer dependent on it. Two things is to make installing packages easier. We've added a Python install package. You can just, from JSL, this is all you need to do is um, you can install packages from here, makes it easy, and it puts them into Jump's private isolated environment. Um, we've, we've tried hard to make sure that this won't conflict with any other Python pipeline that you may have on your system. And, but that means you'll have to install packages into the jump environment. Um, the other is if some of them that need compiling from the command line, you may need to do that from a terminal window and create jpip command will we'll launch a file, a dialog, a directory picker dialog for you to save a jpip wrapper script. So that's our script that wrappers Python's pip, but specifies the appropriate environment variables so that when those packages are installed, they wind up in a place that Jump can find them, your user's application directory. But over here, we have an entire Python category. This is where we've created an import jump package that gives us the capabilities for you to call jump from within Python. The lots of lots of things laid out. Um, most of the you'll find sample directory, project directory, these things are all sample data. If we run the script, the script editor is aware, it will give you the same sorts of things that you would get from the jumps dollar sign special directories in JSL. We also have the ability to um, run JSL from Python. This is, this is our first release with supporting functionality from Python into Jump. And there's a huge amount that JSL can do that we've not been able to have time to implement here. Our focus has been on the data table, being able to interoperate in memory with the data table from Python, be able to send our Jump data table from Python, from, from JSL to Python, be able to operate it live and, and vice versa. So with the run JSL, some of the things like formatting columns, column width, setting formatting types, that's not available in Python at this point, but you can do the run JSL to do those things from your Python script. So this one's, this one's a good example because it shows us creating a data table from Python. And we have a, a data table object, optional parameter of the number of rows. Uh, we can run the script in pieces, just like you can with JSL. So that created a column, five rows, created a column with five rows, 
And we'll see if I can make enough space for things so they don't clash. And as you see the embedded log, we get the output down below. We've got properties on it. We can set the, the table name. We can add columns to it. And we've got an enumeration type, characters, character type. Default is numeric. You can specify that as well. And as you can see, when I run this, it's live. You're, you're operating on the data table. We can access the array access operators. It's column row, um, jumps column base. So we access it by column and row. And the column can be accessed either by name or by zero based index. So the name column, we can set the name column. Boom. Created the names, filled them in. I want to show here, this is a bad value. It's a numeric column, but I wrongly put a string in there. Well, we get a missing value as we would hope, as we'd expect. And we'll set that value with the individual cell and row accessor. And then now the point of this one was the run JSL to show how we can set the formatting by having Python call JSL. And there we go. There's lots here in the scripting index. One of the other things, so I wanted to show, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about, and one of the questions that, that came up was, in the past, 14 through 17, when you sent a data table from with the Python send from JSL, it created a pandas data frame. But the way it created a pandas data frame was jump saved the data table out as a CSV file. And then it told pandas to read that CSV file from the, the disk. That blows up. If you've got large binary files, they become huge text files. And you also have concerns over loss of precision because you're going from binary to text and parsed back to binary. So that is one change that you'll have to make in your existing scripts is that when we do a, a Python send of a jump data table, you wind up getting one of these jump data table objects now instead of a pandas data frame. What you get for that though is it is live access to the table. It's not a copy and it's done all in memory. It's, it's actually just a pointer to the the data table. I'll show in one of the samples here, it's very easy to convert from our jump data table object to a pandas data frame. And conversely, it's easy to build a jump data table object from a pandas data frame, basically column at a time.